The elders here, and this right now is our responsive reading. This is something we do as a weekly practice here where we will briefly together consider and then confess the faith that unites us as a body in Christ. And this, yeah, uh, we use the material of the New City Catechism on the screen behind me. I always like to make sure I got the right question. <laughs> um, but this presents us a series of uh, questions and answers that systematically work us through the core doctrines of the Christian faith. And while the material is helpful and it gives us that nice structure, we don't hold this material itself to be authoritative. We believe that the Bible is God's inspired and infallible word to us. So we look to the Bible and take a bit of time to see what God has taught us about these things through the Bible uh, and who we are, who God is, and how we are to relate to our creator before we then confess these things together. So last week, uh, we addressed the question of how can we glorify God? And the answer was, we glorify God by enjoying him, loving him, trusting him, and obeying his will, commands, and law. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be expanding on what God's commandments and law are. But this is, this is important, right? If we want to obey God by keeping his law and commandments, we need to know what his law and commandments are. So, you know. But this week, we're asking, well, what does the law of God require, right? It's kind of a summary. What is the summary requirement of God's laws? Well, for me, it seems quite wise uh, to, to consider what Jesus said, right? He was asked by one of the Pharisees, which is the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded, or yeah, so he said, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Right? So Jesus makes a very strong claim here that the moral requirements of the entire Old Testament law can be summarized in two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, easy peasy, right? Let's just call this out and well... I'd like to unpack that just a little bit more. It's nice to take a little bit of time to think about these things, right? Because that's, that's a tall order. We need to stop and think about how tall an order that is. We're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. God doesn't just desire an effort. He desires personal, perfect, and perpetual obedience, right? Personal obedience in the sense that everything related to our person, right? Our will, our desires, our decision-making, our actions are all required as a part of our obedience to God. It needs to be perfect, right? These are required in full, not in part. Again, remember how many times that said all our will, all our mind, all our heart, all our soul. And Likewise, in James 2.10, uh, James said, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable to, or guilty of all of it. And this is also requires perpetual obedience. When, these, when this command was originally given uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses follows that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength by saying, and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise. Right? So these are not just things... Uh, for, you know, Sunday morning, where we come and we do our best in church. These are things we take with us outside of church, wherever it is we go. And they're not just things for us. They're things we are to pass on from generation to generation. So again, you know, maybe we could end things there, but I always think it's important. When we hear the requirement of the law of God, it should cause us to ask, do I measure up? Right? Do I satisfy God's law? Do I love God with all my heart, all my soul, and with all my strength? Do I really, truly love my neighbor as myself all the time? No. Right? Let's just be honest with ourselves. The answer is no. Paul wrote to the church of Rome in Romans chapter 3. He said, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, by trying to do what God has told us to do, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin, right? That is the main function of the law. Is it shows us, yes, a bit of who God is, but it also shows us who we are, right? It reminds us of the fall of Adam and Eve, 
But that's not where Paul stops, very thankfully, right? He says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all who believe, for there's no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. So if you desire to be right with God, your creator, that's good, but you can't be made righteous in his sight by trying to obey his law. You can only be made right in his sight through, by faith in the substitutionary atoning death of Jesus, his resurrection from the dead. When, if we believe in that, if we rest our hope in that, then we're both forgiven our sin and we're also declared righteous before God as though we have fulfilled God's law. And so now obedience to God's law isn't something of a vain attempt to earn salvation, something that's doomed to fail, but rather it's because we agree with God about his law, that it is good, that his spirit lives in us and sanctifies us and brings about good spiritual fruit in us. Right? That's why John could write in 1 John 5, 3, that for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in you and producing in you spiritual life. Now, this is something we do out of gratitude for God and the love that he has shown us rather than to earn his love in the first place. So having said this all, I invite you to stand and join. I'm going to read the question at the top, and I'll invite you to join with me in reading the answer beneath. So what does the law of God require? Personal, perfect, and perpetual obedience that we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. What God forbids should never be done, and what God commands should always be done. I'll just take a moment here again to pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your law. And Lord, we thank you that you have shown us what is good, what you desire. You have shown us through your law who you yourself are. And yet, Lord, your law reveals to us uh, an important point of history. Yes, you created Adam and Eve. Yes, you created them good, very good in your sight. But they fell. And with Adam fell all of his descendants. We bear that out, Lord, for we produce sin and we produce the fruit of sin, which is death. That is the common experience of all men since Adam. But Lord, we thank you that that is not where you left the story to end. We thank you for your great love, for your sovereign grace that you have revealed throughout the ages, that you redeem sinful people, a people who do not deserve your love, yet you redeem them by your love. We thank you that in the fullness of time you sent forth your son to bear the punishment for our sin, that we who are under the law might be redeemed from it, so not by perfect obedience, which we can't attain to, but Lord, that we can be redeemed by the blood of the lamb, by the blood of your son. Thank you for your great love with which you've loved us. And I pray, Lord, that your love would produce in us good spiritual fruit, Lord, desire to obey you, not to earn your love, but Lord, out of gratitude for your love to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.